Hey guys, Persistent Programmer here and welcome to my channel. So we solve a lot of questions on this channel and today we're going to look at DFS and how DFS is used in a maze problem. Okay, DFS stands for Depth First Search and it's a search algorithm that allows uh, graph traversals. So that's exactly what we're going to do today and we're going to use recursion. So very quickly, um, the way that the depth first search is different from the breadth first search is that um, depth first search uses a stack in its implementation while the breadth first search uses a queue. Um, so if you want to know uh, or want me to create a video about the differences between depth first search and breadth first search, let me know in the comments below and then I can schedule that video um, if you guys want to see it. So with that being said, the problem we're looking at today is uh, number of islands, and we are going to use depth for search to solve this problem. We're going to go to each cell in the maze, and the code will try to go up, down, left, and right from that cell. And if it's able to do that, it will go to the next cell, and it will, again, try to go up, down, left, right, and check all its neighbors. So that's how the depth for search works in a maze. At each cell, it goes and it tries to go to its neighbor cell, and tries to go up, down, left, and right, and do what it needs to do after that. So in a nutshell, that's how we are going to apply DFS um, to solve this problem. So if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button because that helps me create these content for you guys. So I will put all the notes in the description below. Uh, there will be a link there that will take you to all the notes and all the pictures that I cover in this video. So don't worry, it will be there for you. Um, okay, so without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into the problem. Okay, so first of all, we're gonna get started and understand the problem. And then I'm gonna write some pseudocode and then do a visual walkthrough of the solution to help you understand fully. So the question is pretty straightforward. What they're looking for is um, how many islands can be formed. So if we have um, ones representing the islands and zero representing the water, we just have to see how many of them are connected. So for this question, the output will be one. Um, as you can see here, there's only one um, big island that can be created. And we're looking at, um, islands that are connected in up, down, left, and right direction. So they should not be connected diagonally or they will be um, considered a separate island. So for that, we have example two here. So in example two, there are three islands. So this is number one, and this is number two, and this is number three. And to help you visualize, I've actually created a map here. So um, it's uh, the green is showing the land. So this is question two and the green is showing the land and the blue is the water. So you can see here there's three islands. Okay, awesome. So let's go ahead and um, see how to approach this problem and write some pseudocode. Okay, so when we see a problem like this, we know that we need to traverse through each of the cells um, to figure out where the ones are and how we wanna group them, right? So the first thing I'm gonna do is have a variable here, which is going to be called islands. And this is just going to collect um, how many islands there are. So we will initialize this with zero. And then what we're going to do is we are going to iterate over all the rows and all the columns to visit each and every cell. So this can be done with a nested for loop. So in the outer for loop, you will have your row index, right? So this will have the row index and it's gonna go from the zero to um, where R is less than the length of the um, grid. So I'll just say L for short. So this is your outer for loop. And then inside this, you need to put um, the column index. So for each row, so each row, this is row zero, this is row one, this is row two. And for each row, you need to visit the column. So you need to visit uh, zero, zero. So row zero, column index zero, right? So for that, you will say four. And then for every column index, go from zero and go up to um, the length of the columns, right? So the length of the column is going to be, um, you can just grab this length by taking the first um, length of the first row, right? Because all of the columns have the same length. This is the first row zero, right? So you can grab it that way, okay? So I'll just put L for here, um, but you know that what this is, okay? So we have now two for loops and we're able to visit each cell, okay? Now the next step is, well, what do we need to do when we visit these cells? Well, you need to have a condition to check if it is a one, the cell you're visiting, is it a one or not, right? Because if it's not a one, you don't need to count, you don't need to do anything. So you need to check here if at my current row and column position, right? If I see a one, okay? Um, so here the row position is zero and a column position is zero. So you're asking, hey, is this a one at this position, right? And if it is, then you need to do something, right? So then you need to um, count how many islands there are. And we're going to use DFS to do that. Um, and I will put the DFS function here. So we will call our DFS function and pass in um, 
the row index, so we know where to start the DFS, um, the column index, and we'll pass the grid as well, because we're going to do this in place. So um, we, we're just sending it over so that we can stamp those um, islands visited, okay? So that's what we need to do here. And then when the call returns, so let's say I start my DFS here, and I visit all the neighbors, right? So I have covered all this red area, and I'm done. And I'm good, so I know that that's my island. So how do I account it back to my return, right? So I need to um, add that. So at this level, I need to add that um, to my islands um, variable here. So is the islands variable is just counting the number of islands, right? So it's going to count the number of islands at when this call returns, right? So this call will go and visit all the neighbors and come back, return back from where it was called. And that's when we need to add the islands. And the last thing we need to do here for this function is just return the islands. Okay. Return islands. Okay, awesome. So we're good. We have our structure now for our main function. And now what we're going to do is write our uh, pseudocode for the DFS function. So this is the DFS function. Okay. And what it's going to do is first have a uh, base case. right? So when you're writing any recursive function, you need to have a base case to let the program know when to stop the recursion. right? So our base case is going to have checks for any out of bound. So what do I mean by out of bound? So if we are traversing this uh, this index and we try to go up from here, we can't, right? Because there's no elements above that. If we try to go left, there's no elements above that. So we need to stop the call at that point, right? Um, so we'll check uh, the bounds. So we will check if our row index is less than zero, right? Or our row index is greater than or equal to the length. Okay, and then same thing for the column index. So if the column index is less than zero or the column index is um, greater than or equal to the length of the max columns we can have, right? So if this is the case, then just return. Okay, else what we need to do is we need to check um, if we see a one, right? If we see a one, then we need to stamp that as a zero. And we are stamping this because we don't want to return back to this function and then count that one again, right? So let's do a visual walkthrough. So if I'm here, right, I start my call from here and okay, I'm looking up, down, uh, left, right. Okay, so I can't go up, I can't go uh, left, but I can go right. Okay, so then I call DFS on this right um, cell here, okay? So from the right cell, I can't go up, um, I can't go to the right again because there's water, but I can go down, right? So when I go down, I'm calling the DFS on this cell. And then um, as I'm going, I'm stamping all of these to zero. So I'm marking all of these um, as water. Okay, so let's visualize that. So here I have changed this to a zero. So I've stamped this zero. And then same here, I've stamped this zero. Okay, and then I've stamped this zero. And then lastly, uh, when the DFS is called on this cell, um, it's also going to be stamped zero. So this is the first return um, from the DFS function back here. And what it's going to do at this point is it's going to increment um, one to the island here, right? So this indicates that we have accounted for this one island, right? So that's how the DFS works. And in, the, in this for loop, this will still keep going. And it's not going to mark um, these again because it, it only looks for where grid um, in that row and column index is one, but this is a zero now because we have stamped and drowned those islands to indicate to our program that, hey, we're done accounting for this island. So that's why we're doing that. And then in the um, next call to the DFS, we're going to stamp and um, make this island drown and we will come back here and the islands will be updated to two now for this case. And then in the last call, we are going to um, drown this cell and this cell, and then return and update the islands to three. So that's how the DFS is going to work. And at each step, it's going to look up, down, left, and right, and figure out if it's able to um, form an island from the current cell, okay? So I hope this helped you understand how the program is going to run. Um, now let's go ahead and look at the code. Awesome, so I'm back in the code, and the first thing I'm going to do is an edge case check. So if we're getting given um, an empty array, we just need to return zero because there will be no islands on um, an empty input. Okay, so I'm going to say if um, if grid dot length 
two g two length equals um, or is less than one, then just go ahead and return zero. Okay, awesome. So that's done. And the next thing we need to do is um, iterate over all the cells. So we're going to go through all the rows and columns. And to do this, we will use two for loops. So at first, I will say for, and then we can say let r equal zero. Okay, let me um, create some variables to hold the row and column one, just because that's going to be easier here. So I will say um, row length equals grid dot length and column length is equal to grid at the index of zero dot length. Okay. Awesome. So we have that. And now what we want to do is go from um, zero all the way to the last row. So it's going to start here and go all the way to the last row. Um, and then I will say r equals zero, r is less than um, row length, and r plus plus. And next, we're going to go through each of the columns in each of the rows. So these are the each um, of the items in the columns. So I will say for let c equals 0, oops, c equals 0, and c is less than colon, okay, c++. Plus plus. Okay, awesome. So now we need to check if there is a 1. So if there is a 1, we need to trigger the DFS. So that's why we're checking that. Um, and if we find a one, we will just call our DSF function. So I like to write the main function first and then um, write any helper functions after. So that's how I um, structure um, these problems. So let's go ahead and write that if statement. So I will say if grid at the index of row and column is equal to one, then what we need to do is call our um, find function, right? So we can say uh, find and we'll pass in the row, the column, um, the grid. And yeah, that looks good. OK, so we have our find function here. And oh, we what we need to do is keep track of how many islands there are. So we will say islands equals 0. So we'll initialize this to 0. And then what we're going to do is we will um, update these islands every time we return from, a, from the call. So if we start our call here, it's going to go left, right, up and down, check all the um, once and then it's going to return to this function right so that's when we want to count uh, the island number so i will say islands plus e plus plus okay so every time it returns it's going to count the island and what i'm going to do at the end is just return the islands because we just need to return how many islands um, are present so i will go ahead and return islands Okay, so this looks good. Um, now what we need to do is just write our helper function here, find. Okay, awesome. So what I'm going to do now is create my DFS function. And so I'll create the function and I will pass in the row index, the column index, and the grid. And that's the same thing we're uh, calling here when we call our find. Okay, so awesome. So that's there. And then we need to take care of our base cases. So the base cases identify when the recursion is going to stop. And these are the cases that will happen if we go out of bounds, right? Like if r is less than zero, which means it is over here, um, then that's an out of bound case. Or if it's greater than the uh, length of the grid, um, then that's an out of bound case. So let's take care of all those out of bound cases right now. So we can say if r is less than zero or r is um, greater than or equal to um, the grid length, grid dot length, or if the c, if our column index is less than zero, or if our column index is greater than or equal to um, grid at the index zero dot left, right? So if all these cases happen, we need to stop the recursion. Okay, so we will say um, return. Okay, great. So now that we have our base cases in place, uh, what we need to check is if our um, if the cell we are on is it a one? Because if it's not a one, we don't need to do anything, right? Um, because it's uh, it's already the water, so we don't have anything to do. So we're, we're going to check if the grid at um, that row and column index that we're checking is equal to 1. And if this is the case, then we're going to do the sinking. We're going to go and drown that um, that item, because that cell, because we don't want to keep counting the, num the same uh, number of islands. Right?
Okay, so when we find a one, we're going to stamp that as a zero because we don't want to keep counting it when this call returns to our for loop. We don't want to see the next one and then count it again as an island, right? So that's why we're going to uh, say grid RC equals zero. So we have stamped that as zero. Okay, that's good. Now, all we need to do is go um, in the four directions from every single cell. So in order to do that, we're going to call find. And in that, we'll pass in um, the row, column, and grid. So let me just uh, copy this over. Okay, so I'm going to go four directions. And we're going to go R minus one, which is up. So this is up. And we're going to go R plus one, which is down. And then C minus one, which is to the left. And C plus one, which is to the right. Okay, so this looks good. Um, so let's go ahead and just run this and make sure there's no uh, typos or errors. Okay, awesome, accepted. So I'll go ahead and submit. Awesome, it works, yay.